mm-hmm. you were separating yourself from the crowd and opening the doors for yourself. And what you did was take action forwards. Mm-hmm. And we've spoken about things today already where you have actively spotted a problem or friction point in your life and being able to say, taking this one step forwards will make these changes, which is a very hard thing to do, but you've always been very good at it. Mm. So your sense of identity, purpose at that age when you left drama school Mm -hmm. with all the hope, all the will in the world and found yourself not necessarily getting the jobs that you thought you would, Mm -hmm. what was your sense of self, your sense of purpose, your sense of identity like during that? Because at a young age, I think back to when I was that age, you think you know everything, you think you've figured everything out. Oh, yeah. And and you you don't necessarily learn to adapt as quickly as you might do now. Mm-hmm. So how, how how was how how did you feel on a day to day basis managing that rejection, managing those punches, and actually then effectively planning what you were going to do next? Because that's a hard thing to do. Actually yeah. saying this is what I'm going to do and then doing it is tough. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've said previously, but like it was training was the safety blanket for me. It's what kind of saved me from this chaos that I was in because I was just with hospitality and the the nature of the beast it was a very very like premium restaurant so it's big spending people with signet rings rolexes all these people that are coming and expecting the world you see people snorting in the toilets it's like you're very much around that sort of environment um and i knew i didn't want to be involved in that um so i found training i found crossfit and uh i just started training and it was the only positive thing in my life that was like I'm getting a lot of no's in auditions. And the one yes I'm getting every day is from a little old coach that's just telling me that was good. Yep. Or more weight on the bar. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can do more. Keep going. Keep lifting. And then going, maybe don't lift anymore. You hit that one clean. That's perfect. I'll see you tomorrow. We've got endurance. Um, well done today. Pat on the shoulder. Um, whereas then you go to an audition room, you turn up to a like an NHS training video that's 600 pounds it's two days of filming and you think you're being unique by wearing a blue shirt and everyone in the waiting room has got as the same mustache the same receding hairline they're all in a blue shirt and you're like well fuck me everyone looks the same i'm not getting this gig um so there's this really toxic world of just like audition rooms are weird because you go in even the reception staff that are checking the actors in I think every actor is overly nice. They're overly nice to every single person along the way because they think they might speak to the producer, they might speak to the directors. Very false. Yeah, everyone comes in, they add a voice, they put on a voice, Sam Cornforth for the NHS advert, and then they sit down and everyone's like, some people are like just like smiling at each other. Like it's all, it's all so false. And everyone starts awkwardly having conversations, being like, um, nice, I don't know. nice blue shirt. Yeah, they're like, oh, like a shirt. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? We're all like, it's just awkward. And no one's being themselves because everyone is shitting it and everyone's desperate for a job. Um, so training was that one thing that I could turn up and I could wear a Primark t-shirt, Primark shorts, some Vans, and give it my best effort. And as long as I did that, someone would, at the end of the class, be like, well done, fist bump, you smashed it. And that for me was like, that became the addiction. Um, and that's what yeah helped me along the way. 